people is what Sacagawea said about being a guide for the Lewis and Clark expedition. During this expedition, she was brave, determined, and courageous. This is why I believe Sacagawea should be nominated for our fifth grade hall of fame. As a child, Sacagawea got kidnapped by another tribe called the Minatari and was soon sold to be one of two Sant Charbonneau's Indian wives when she was only 16. When Sacagawea was chosen to be a translator for the expedition, she was pregnant. She gave birth to a daughter. She gave birth to a boy and the, who came with her on the expedition. This journey took over two years to finish. Afterwards, Sacagawea and her family went to St. Louis to start a small business. After a fur training trip, Sacagawea gave birth to a daughter and then sadly died in labor. More than 100 years later, Sacagawea got recognized for her work by being put on the $1 coin. This is why I believe Sacagawea should be nominated for our fifth grade Hall of Fame. From humble beginnings, becoming the voice of the voiceless, Coretta's journey, struggles, and triumphs in the fight for equality and justice are very important. Coretta was, Coretta was not only determined to end segregation, but compassionate for feeling sympathy for the LGBTQ, homeless, poor, and people of all races. Coretta has dedicated her life to the pursuit of civil rights, social change, and carrying on her husband's legacy. Coretta Scott King was born in Alabama in 1927. As a young girl, Coretta excelled in music and band. In addition, education was very important to her and her family. Coretta's husband... Um, one of Coretta's major accomplishments was receiving honorary doctorates from over 60 colleges and universities. Coretta's husband was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Together they fought against segregation. They marched, peacefully protested, and Coretta even held concerts of her singing about civil rights. Um, after Martin's death, Coretta founded the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolence and Peace in Alabama. She then carried on his legacy for the rest of her life and helped end segregation. As you can see, Coretta Scott King has made an amazing impact on the world by helping end segregation, by holding events, and by all around being an amazing person. Coretta Scott King, Coretta Scott King has helped end segregation and, conti and continued to be an amazing person throughout her life. This is why I nominate Coretta Scott King to this year's Hall of Fame. Have you ever wondered that someone could or maybe has been an actor, governor, and president all within their lifespan? Well, if you have, that person is Ronald Reagan. He was an actor in Hollywood before governor of state California. He was also president from 1981 to 1989. Here are some more reasons why Ronald Reagan should be in this year's Hall of Fame. When Ronald Reagan was young, he enjoyed sports, acting, and student politics. He was captain of the football team and wanted to move out to Hollywood to be an actor. He did. In Hollywood, he started movie after movie after movie after movie. And by 1959, he was in 50 plus movies. In 1966, he ran for governor of California, and of course, he won. And he helped grow the economy, and this is why California is one of the best states in the nation. In 1980, Ronald Reagan ran for president, and of course, he won. He helped grow the economy and reinstalled many bills to help the country grow. In 1984, he ran again, and of course, won again. This is the reason why America is so popular and so powerful today. In 1989, he, he left the, president, the Oval Office, and this is why I'm so glad to present him in this year's Hall of Fame. Thank you. Genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. These are the famous words of Thomas Alva Edison, the man who invented the electric light bulb. As a young boy, Thomas was very curious, and he did some questionable stuff. In 1879, much later, Thomas invented the electric light bulb. Thomas was, very, was, was a hard-working man. He perfected many things like the telephone and more. He also invented things like the light bulb. This is why Thomas Edison should be nominated to the Hall of Fame. Thomas Alva Edison was born in 1847 and was the last born of seven children. Thomas himself was very curious, so he did some... Th Th Thomas Edison was very curious. Once, he even sat in a goose egg in his family's barn to see if it would hatch. Soon after, he became very ill, which almost led him to becoming completely deaf. But his loss of hearing so didn't stop him from becoming a great inventor and, and creating one of those brilliant inventions, the electric light bulb. Thomas had the idea of inventing the electric light bulb. He knew that the candle was dangerous when used as a nightlight, and the gas emitted dangerous gases like carbon monoxide that could lead to death. So. Thomas got thinking of a solution that wasn't dangerous, but was affordable. It took Thomas a year and a half of testing and filling, trying different filaments, like fishing lines, spider webs, and bamboo. Thomas expected the electric light bulb to only take a few weeks, instead of a year and a half. Tom, Tom, it, Thomas finally succeeded in inventing the electric light bulb in 1879. As Thomas has said, there's a better way to do it. Find it. So, 
Sadly, on October 18, 1931, Thomas died at the age of 84. He, had, he was well known for inventing the electric light bulb and being very curious as a boy. He, he has inspired me to work hard and to never give up, even when I feel frustrated in life. In conclusion, this is why I nominate Thomas Alva Edison into the Hall of Fame. Welcome, and let me tell you about my Hall of Fame nominee, Claire Barton. Would you like it if you were sick and the doctor wasn't there to help you? Well, not every soldier who was hurt on the battlefield survived. Clara liked helping people and stay seen in the summer. She was always there on the battlefield when people needed her. Clara is the reason why we have the American Red Cross today. She should be nominated into this year's Hall of Fame because she was always there to help people. As a child, Claire wanted to be a nurse. At age 11, she helped her brother 10 years older than her get better after an accident. When she was older, she was a nurse on the battlefield. Being a nurse inspired her to create the American Red Cross. She went to Europe and studied the Red Cross and figured that America needed one too. Along with Claire's passion about helping people, she also helped families track down the missing loved ones that fought in the war. In the years 1865 through 1868, Clara helped track down more than 22,000 missing soldiers. More than 22,000 missing soldiers. Clara had many successful journeys throughout her life. She also advocated for women's rights to season B Anthony. She helped many people throughout her life. She was always there when people needed her. Most people saw her as a nurse, but she also advocated for women's rights. This is why she should be nominated into this year's Hall of Fame. How would you feel if you traveled halfway across the world with something important to say, and then were told that you couldn't speak, nor even sit? Well, it didn't discourage Lucretia Mott. Instead of feeling down and defeated, she proceeded to organize the first women's rights convention alongside Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Throughout Lucretia Mott's life, she's made a tremendous impact on society. Um, I feel that Lucretia Mott should be appointed into the 2024 fifth grade Hall of Fame. Lucretia Mott started her long journey to equal rights on January 3, 1793 in Nanteca, Massachusetts. At age 13, Lucretia started attending Nine Partners Boarding School for Quakers. During the time she was there, she learned about the treacherous horror of slavery from readings from Elias Hicks, a Quaker abolitionist. At, age, at the age of 15, Lucretia then became an assistant teacher at Nine Partners, where she met James Mott, whom she later married. She then advanced the role of a teacher and became a Quaker minister as well in Pennsylvania. In 1840, she was a delegate to attend the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London, where she met Elizabeth Cady Stanton. There, they came up with the idea of a women's rights convention. It would be the first women's rights convention on July 19th through 20th in 1848. 68 women and 32 men would sign what is called the Declaration of Sentiments. It was made to be like the Declaration of Independence, but instead it listed ways in which women were treated unfairly. Soon after, in 1850, she and James made their house a stop on the Underground Railroad. Multiple years later, in 1864, she and James co-founded what is now Swarthmore College. But she didn't stop there. For years, she was vice president of the Universal Peace Union. She then proceeded to become the first president of the American Equal Rights Association, organized for both African Americans and women. In addition, she became president of the Pennsylvania Peace Society in 1870. As you can see, it is very clear that Lucretia Mott has made a huge impact on society, and her legacy still lives on today. With two memorials in her name, Lucretia Mott has ignited the women's rights movement and expressed her thoughts on slavery throughout her impactful 87 years of life. That is why I nominate Lucretia Mott into the 2024 Fifth Grade Hall of Fame. January 28, 1986, the tragic day of the space shuttle, the Challenger's explosion. It exploded with seven crew members aboard, six NASA-certified astronauts, and and one teacher, Krista McAuliffe. Krista McAuliffe was a high school social studies teacher nominated to be the first teacher in space. In my speech, I'll talk about the childhood and education of Krista, the explosion of the Challenger, and a little bit about the Krista McAuliffe Space Center. I nominate Krista McAuliffe to be in the Hall of Fame. Krista McAuliffe was born in Framingham, Massachusetts and graduated and with four siblings and graduated from Meridian High School in 1966. She enrolled at Framingham State College and studied American history and education. She taught at Bow Memorial School to then move over to Concord High School in New Hampshire. There were millions of people watching the explosion when it happened. Her family, friends, and millions of other American people. Uh, the unusually cold 36 degree weather in Florida that day caused the O-rings to burst, resulting in an explosion 72 seconds into the flight. All seven crew members passed away that day. The Krista McAuliffe Space Center is dedicated to children learning about space shuttles and how they work. The center has a planetarium, a mission control game center, replica of, a replica of the Challenger, a replica of Neil Armstrong's spacesuit, an origami corner, a planetarium, a planetarium and a mission control game center. Krista McAuliffe inspired the world to pursue their dreams. This is why I nominate Krista McAuliffe for the Hall of Fame. 
I'm nominating Henry Knox to the Hall of Fame. Henry Knox lived between 1750 and 1806. He was born in Boston. Knox dropped out of school at the age of nine to support his family. At the age of 21, he opened his own bookstore, where he then gained a love for military planning. Knox is known for his role playing in the Revolutionary War. He is known for his trip to Fort Ticonderoga, where he and his men acquired 59 cannons from the British, which played an important role in the beginning of the war. Knox was a mastermind in his plan, getting this done in 56 days. With the help of oxen and sleds, on St. Patrick's Day, he succeeded his mission. That is why I'm nominating Henry Knox to the Hall of Fame. Liberty once lost is lost forever. Those are the famous words of our second president. John Adams was born October 30th, 1735 in Braintree, Massachusetts. John Adams, John Adams had two siblings and lived on a farm and enjoyed outdoor activities. John Adams grew up wanting to be a farmer but later became a lawyer. John Adams had Loved to read but did not like school, but still worked hard and later went to Harvard. John Adams, be John Adams became a spokesperson for the colonies. John Adams helped was in the First and Second Continental Congress and became vice president. He also helped write the Declaration of Independence, which made the 13 colonies free states. John Adams was one of the founding fathers who didn't own enslaved Africans and wanted them to be free. John Adams was was no, was known as father of American independence. John Adams was not only known for his hard work, but he was also known as a great husband who wrote his life many letters well away. John Adams lived lived a remarkable life till 90 years old and died July 4th, 1826. John Adams was known for his hard work, dedication, and patriotism. This is why I think John Adams should be nominated to this year's Hall of Fame. Okay. He was on the money and he was he was right there and right there. And he was on the mansion. Okay. Four score and seven years ago, these were words that were once spoken in the proud, confident voice of our 16th President, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln had a bright mindset for education. He loved to read and jump to any opportunity to learn something new. His favorite book was a biography on George Washington. His family despised the slavery and in result moved to Indiana, a free state. Um, during, Lincoln had many important accomplishments throughout his life. He was part of the legislative branch and later became our 16th President. During his presidency, the Civil War broke out because of the disagreement between the northern and southern states. He's also known for a debate between him and Stephen Douglas called the Gettysburg Address. If there is one thing Lincoln should be known for, it is his honesty. Once after he worked, a lady paid him six cents too much, but Lincoln walked three miles to return the money. Lincoln is also very responsible. Once he had borrowed a book from a farmer. After he read it, it got ruined, but Lincoln worked to pay back the money. Because of his hard work and determination, Lincoln made a big difference to many people's lives, and this is why I nominate him to this year's Hall of Fame. Ruth Handler said, my whole philosophy of Barbie was through the doll, the little girl could be anything she wanted to be. When Ruth's daughter Barbara was a child, she noticed she liked playing with paper dolls more than baby dolls. This is why she decided to make a doll that was made out of plastic and the latest fashion. In 1959, Ruth's company in Mattel sold the first ever Barbie doll for $3. In 1956, 61, Ruth, Ruth also sold the first ever Ken doll for $3. The original Barbie doll is so iconic that it is worth up to $27,000. Ruth Handler created one of the most popular do toys in American history. This is why I admire and nominate her into the Hall of Fame. The Celtics have the ball with 10 seconds left on the clock. They are down by two points and have no timeouts left. 3, 2, 1, and he shoots, bang! What a fantastic shot to win the NBA Finals. That all happened because of the accomplishments James Naismith made on the sports world. James was born... James was born... 1861 in Ontario, Canada, and while there, his mother and father died from the typhoid fever when he was only nine years old. And when he was, uh, and when he was only 11 years old, her, his grandmother died of old age. James learned at a young age to be resilient. It wasn't hard to know that James Naismith was smart, but he hated school. He had to play this game called Duck on Rock, which got him the idea of basketball. Uh, 
he went on to become professor, I mean, he went to McGill College, and while there, he practiced hard every single day to make a new game to play with his friends, which is now called basketball. He went on to become professor at McGill College and a head coach for the University of Kansas basketball team. James has inspired many other people to make their own sports and to have fun while doing it. That's why I think James Naismith should be in the Hall of Fame. Thank you.